for a couple of months prior to coming in full time and and winning the belt, uh, you brought in just for TV tapings yes. once a month from Florida, right? Yes. Um, why was it done that way? Was it just to fulfill the obligation and ride out your time for Eddie? Why was the taping done? This well, why were you brought in while you were still working in Florida just to do uh, the TV for Vince and then back to Florida? Brought in, uh, they were doing three weeks of taping at one session, at one night. Three separate hours of, of tapings, right. three separate weeks of tapings, right. and then uh, edited in. So it was to expose me to the New York market, excuse me, and at the same time, still continuing to wrestle in Florida instead of sitting idly by. Right. And so the, the object was to bring me in and to expose me to the New York market so the New York market would know who. And the first, the first night, the first day I came into New York, we were taping in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Vince McMahon Sr. Meet him for the uh, uh, for the second time. Uh, he, he introduces me to the Grand Wizard. And he says, "Superstar, this is the Wiz, the Grand Wizard, and he's going to be your manager." And I said, "Really?" It just caught me off guard because I had never had a manager, and I was perfectly capable of cutting my own promos right. and speaking for myself. And so I said. He's going to do what? Nothing against the Grand Wizard at all. Nothing. I, but I, I was not told this. And so I said, he's going to be my manager? And I said, uh, okay. I said, Vince, you and I right now need to go over in a corner and sit down and talk. And that's what we did. And we went over into an isolated corner. I explained to Vince Senior that I've never really had a manager a little bit with Humperdinck in Carolina, in Florida, which really wasn't a manager. It was just a fun thing. I still cut my own promos and did my own thing. And I said, you know, Vince, uh, I'm, I'm just not comfortable. I've never had someone basically speak for me, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, because that is part of my persona and my offering to the people is my personality and my charisma and so to share to share part of me with the manager I said I don't know if I'm prepared to do that I don't know nothing against the Grand Wizard personally but it's just the concept I was not prepared because I was not told this sure what do he say and he said Billy Never forget it. Billy is almost crying. Billy, just do it for me, this <laughs> senior. He says, just try it. He says, just try it. It's your it. second time meeting him. Do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, do it for me. Said, well, who are you? <laughs> do it for you. Who are you? And so this man, senior, actually tells me, please, Billy, just do this for me. And I'm saying, well, okay, here I am. And this is a big deal. And so I need to make this thing work. And so I saw the wizard. And I saw his little turban and all his little stuff. <laughs> and I was a little bit familiar with him anyway because I'd seen some earlier things of the Grand Wizard and this crazy stuff. And I thought, well, I can make this thing actually work. So I took the Grand Wizard and we sat down together at that very first night. And I said, Wiz, you will be my uh, manager, we'll share our interviews, but you will also be like a valet for me. You'll prep me, you'll comb my hair for me, you'll take my sunglasses off, and you'll take my boa off, and you'll, you'll, you'll try to pull the t-shirt off my pythons, and we'll make this thing work. Because it had to work, because I was there. And so it actually turned out to be a perfect marriage of the Grand Wizard being this flamboyant, berserk little guy, this crazy little guy, being, taking my sunglasses and combing my hair and primping me, mm -hmm. I almost said pimping me, 
but I didn't. <laughs> Primping me. And so it was actually a marriage made in heaven. It was a perfect fit. It was a perfect fit. When you came from Florida into the WWF rings, did you have to change your style of, of work and just a physical mat style with the guys that were up north versus Florida? No, because I was never a skilled practitioner of professional wrestling as the NWA uh, boys were. I was more of a uh, strength versus strength type situation mm -hmm. and uh, Eddie Graham uh, saw my limitations and there was never a need for me to become a skilled Ric Flair technical performer. So it was a very easy transition gotcha. because I was never a real wrestler. Gotcha. Uh, 77, uh, give us the power structure a little bit. I'm going to give you some names. I want you to tell me your best of recollection in 77 what their roles were in the company. Willie Gilsenberg. It's hard to remember. Uh, it's hard to remember. I, I, of course, I know I know these people. It's hard to remember because they were so they were so old school people that the office that Vince had mm. was in the Edison Hotel. Yes, you're familiar with that. That is in Washington, right? No, this time. was this was in New York. Oh, they already been in New York. What was the, the place? In he Washington? had a place in Washington. This was this was, when it was way capital. back before. That's what was capital. That's what was capital. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vince Sr. had a temporary office in a building called the Edison Hotel, rat infested. Right, on 40, uh, yes, Times Square. 46th Street. Times Square. 48th Street. Times Square. Street, yeah. Times Square. Mm -hmm. Half the size of this room, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe barely a third the size of this room. And that is where he came in before, a day before the garden and the taping and all of that and opened up his book and did the booking and there were these seats like we're sitting in rows of old older gentlemen who had already been uh, previously in the business that then senior would give a couple hundred dollars to as a payday mm. as a favor mm. as a gentleman to take care of some of these older guys and the first time I walked in his office, and I saw this senior sitting there with Arnold Scolan, uh, and I saw these older gentlemen sitting around, and like this, and I said, "This is the most surreal thing." We are talking about Madison Square Garden here, mm -hmm. folks, and I'm in a little bitty closet for an office, like this, you know, and I'm asking, I'm asking Arnold Scolan for two tickets and on the main event. And Arnold Scold stingily peels off, barely can, Arnold Scold, barely can give me two tickets and I'm the one selling the building out, okay? <laughs> for a few guests. One was Dan Lurie, sitting with Valerie at the time. My wife, yeah, the yes. And so, so this was the surreal, rat-infested hotel, the Edison Hotel, that is the temporary office yeah. for the northeastern United States wrestling millions of dollars of income. One Titan Tower, wasn't Titan. But these are the power players I'm talking about: Skull and Phil Zacco. Uh, Phil Zacco. Gilsenberg, uh, even Phil Monsoon, Zacco. who had a piece of the company. Yes. Yeah. Phil Zacco, on, I got paid every three weeks um, when I was champion. I had to uh, sign a contract. As the contract came when I was champion, that they would take one-third of my paycheck and set that aside to make sure that I gave the belt up when, the belt, when it came time to give the belt up. And so I would I would get paid every three weeks from the three we at, at the TV tapings from the previous three weeks of earnings. Right. And Vince Senior, this is in the Philadelphia Auditorium, the old arena rather, would take me into this back room with the one light bulb overhead, with Phil Zackel sitting there with a book and uh, 
it would cut me a paycheck, and I would begin to question about this town and that town. And of course, they were skimming tremendous amounts of money from everyone, including me. And uh, I would I would question Phil Zacko's accuracy as an accountant. And uh, uh, this was a, a, an issue, but I was certainly not going to make it a huge issue because I was making a very decent amount of money for that era. Mm. But that was the payoff for me every three weeks in a, in a little room in that arena with one light bulb, with Phil Zacco and Vince Senior sitting there. Wow. Like a scene from a Cagney movie or something. Yeah. A, a scene, a real life yeah. scene that would be hard to reproduce. Uh, surreal. Yeah. Extremely surreal. 